Praise the Lord, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a privilege again to come to you today in this video message, or probably you watch, you're listening the audio message. Uh, well, I, I believe it will bless you as you're watching it the same way as you're watching the video message. I was asked by a sister in Ken in Korea uh, to uh, uh, how to teach us how to pray for the sick, or how do we receive our healing. For those of us who are not uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit and, uh, and not really going to dip into the Word of God, we don't know how uh, we uh, can receive our healing or how we can minister healing to the sick. Most people uh, say that, well, Jesus is the Son of God. He was able to uh, raise the dead. Uh, he was able to heal the sick. Uh, he was able to cure all manner of sickness and disease and cast out demons. And they say, we're not Jesus. We can't do all these things that are only given to Jesus. But I want to tell you that today, a good news for you, that you can do that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. That's what he, Jesus, invested in three and a half years training his disciple into how to pray for the sick, how to pray, uh, you know, to calm the storm, how to uh, do such miracle and that miracle, how to win the lost. Do you remember that? When, uh, when Jesus uh, uh, first met Peter, who was a fisherman, and uh, after, uh, you know, uh, Jesus borrowed the boat of Peter and taught the people the word of God. And later on, after uh, if he finished that, and Peter all night long, they hadn't caught any fish. And then Jesus asked them to launch to the deep. And according to your word, they let down their, according to the word of Jesus, they let down their, their, their uh, nets and they caught a multitude of fish. And after that, of course, Jesus told him, that uh, from now on I will make you a fisher of man. So uh, that's the making of the fisher of man. The making is the process. So like when it comes to the healing, it's the same thing. It's a process, learning, learning uh, uh, the word, learning how Jesus did it. And if we do it the same way Jesus did, we see the same results. And the very fact that, first of all, we need to understand that Jesus did not heal because he's the son of God. Of course, he has power to create as a son of God. But not only that, he left his glory and, and he came down to earth as a perfect man and uh, 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 took uh, uh, in, in the likeness of man. And the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, he become a slave, a servant. That means uh, though he was sinless and had no inherent sin from Adam like us and uh, also never committed a sin like we did committed the masses of sins and we are uh, forgiven by his blood and washed and get righteousness only uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. But he was perfect and sinless man. And the first reason that God, when God created the human being, what we have to understand, first of all, God didn't create sickness and disease and he does not uh, give sickness and disease to people. And the first man, when he was created, he was not crippled, he was not blind, he was not deaf. He was a perfect man that God made and put him in a perfect world, environment where there is uh, uh, no knowledge of sin for the human race. Of course, the devil was the first sinner, rebel, rebelled against God and thrown into the earth. And then God created the human to be above the devil, not under him, not being subject to the devil, but he was created to rule. That's what he told them in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. He said, God, rule the earth and subdue it. That was the first thing God spoke to the human being, to rule over the circumstances and the, the, the environment that God has put uh, man. That was his commission and assignment. And as we know that sin crippled, sin sneak into this world through one disobedience, eating the fruit, the forbidden fruit, the, the fruits of the knowledge, the tree from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then the human race 
become cursed. Now, after that curse, after the sin came into the world, that means Adam gave his authority, which God has had given him, gave it to Satan, willingly submitting the authority, because the authority works as long as Adam was in fellowship with God, in relationship with God, and, and, and in, in, when he is in faith. But he did not believe God. Both of them, they believed uh, or trusted the word of Satan than the word of God. So the problem in the first place was faith. If we want to see God's word to work for us, we need the faith of God. The God, we need to put our trust in the word of God. We need to have faith in the word and that faith really works. So now Jesus came. Now I just want to tell you the whole picture first. Let's get the whole picture. Of course, in the Old Testament, we see some healings, uh, uh, some chosen people, special people uh, were gifted to heal uh, the sick, like Isaiah, uh, we see, uh, uh, and others, Moses, and they saw multitudes of healing at one time. And, uh, uh, and finally, of course, uh, God sent his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus came and uh, all he did was, while he was in his earthly ministry, he started his ministry around when he was 30 years old, and uh, he ministered for three and a half years. In those days, he healed every sick person, everyone who come in faith, except him, we read in Mark chapter 6 that uh, he couldn't heal some because of their unbelief. Where, wherever there is faith, whenever people believe and trust them and come to him, they received their healing. The woman who came to, and said that if I touch the hem of his garment, uh, I'll be healed. And she did, and she was healed. Now you might say, where is Jesus that I may touch the hem of his garment? You know, you want to see him. You want to touch the hem of his garment. You want to copy the, the, the experience of the woman. Now we're going to come into that one. But I want to tell you a few things. First of all, the purpose that Jesus came on earth is not his ultimate purpose is not to heal the sick. His ultimate purpose is not just to cast out demons only. His ultimate purpose is to bring, restore the relationship that we had lost because of Adam. So Jesus came. He died on the cross to bring the human race back to God restoration. That means we may have a, a direct relationship. You know, it was impossible to have a direct relationship unless the sin issue is solved. So that wall of separation between man and God is destroyed. When Christ died on the cross, as you know and read this, the, the scripture, we see uh, when Jesus died, uh, the temple, uh, the, the curtain in the temple torn from the top to, to the bottom. That curtain, you know, when in the Old Testament, when they built the temple, they had a three section. The first section, the most holy place, the Holy of Holies, what they call where the presence of God is, where the Ark of God and only the high priest could go into that place holding blood for the remission, for forgiveness of sin of the people on it, and, and himself. Uh, he get into that place and when he go past the curtain, they uh, tie his leg with a robe in case he dies, no one could go in, so they have to pull him out by the rope. And, uh, and he has also a bell in his leg tied up. And all, the, all that is talking about the redemption, how God redeemed us by the blood of Christ. So no one could enter and then he comes out and we have the holy place. Only the priestess will go in there to do their daily ministry. They light in the lights and put the, uh, 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 the candles and all that and the show braid and everything that God told them through Moses and they do that. And then we have the outer court. So that's how the, uh, uh, the temple 
or the tent of meeting was built according to God has showed him. It's just a, a three thing, you know, always we, we have so many three things in the Bible. God is a triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are triune. We have soul, spirit, and body. And we see in now also the temple is built in this section, and that's talking about us. Our spirit man is where the Holy Spirit, don't you know that you are the temple of God? The Bible says if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord Savior, and if you have invited him into your heart, you are the temple of God. The Bible says, don't you know that you are the temple of God? That's from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Don't you know that? So what makes a temple, what the temple, what makes a, a temple a temple is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit dwells in those days and that way. And then later God said, I'm not going to dwell in a human made buildings. He said, I'm going to dwell in you. That's why he put his laws, write his law in our heart and dwell in our spirit by his spirit. That's why those who worship God should worship God in the spirit and truth. So if you know this truth and if you are into this experience that you are a child of God, born again, the Spirit of the Lord living inside of you and you believe this way. And now you are, you are qualified to minister healing. First of all, uh, in order to pray for the sick, you need to be qualified. And what is the qualification? The qualification that uh, is all that I have talked right now. Are you born again? Are you a child of God? Is your sins washed by the blood of Jesus? Are you a righteous person? Now the Bible says it's our righteousness is not like, you know, when you fast, when you pray, one day you feel you are righteous and another day uh, you don't feel righteous. That's not, uh, don't base your righteousness that way. The Bible calls it, our righteousness is a filthy rock. Our righteousness is Christ. Not our good deeds. We are righteous. You know, you, you're, you're saved to do good. I'm telling you that you are not doing good to be saved. You are saved to do good, of course. And you're a righteous person. And because you're a righteous person, you, have, you will have a righteous fruit. You will bear the fruit of righteousness, peace, joy, love, long-suffering, kindness, mercy, meekness, and all that we, we, we see in Galatians chapter 5 from, uh, you know, if you read it from uh, verse 21 and all those verses is talking about 19 to 21. If you go on, let's say it tells you that the fruit of the Spirit and those the fruit of the Spirit, that which it talks about there. First of all, I produced in our life because we are righteous. So God wants to change our identity. So if you want to minister uh, to the sick, first, you got to know that you are a righteous person, okay? Now, uh, a righteous person. And you have to say, Christ is my righteousness. Elijah was just like us. James chapter 5 he tells us he was just like us. But Elijah's prayer was powerful. He moved, uh, uh, you know, that prayer moves the mountain. He, Elijah prays earnestly, the heavens were closed and no rain. Elijah prays earnestly and the heavens opened and the rain came. You know, that kind of prayer that uh, uh, when earth uh, 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 manage the heavens, you know, from the earth and praise. That's a powerful prayer. Why? Because he was a righteous person. And when you are a righteous in Christ, then you have to know it for yourself. First of all, you have to be sure, very sure, sure that the work of Jesus Christ is enough to cleanse your sins, to make you a righteous person. If you compare yourself with the best sense of the old and you feel inferior, you feel that you're not worthy, you have not seen yet 
what Jesus did for you. But if you know that you are as righteous as Paul was, if you know that you are as righteous as Mary was, if you understand that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses and purifies you from all unrighteousness and can make you stand before the Holy God, and you know that you know that you know that your prayer can be effective and powerful. And that faith is very important when you pray for the sick, and when you pray even for yourself to live a healthy life. Praise the name of the Lord. So let me take you to the book of Matthew chapter 10. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, when... Uh, Matthew chapter 10, the Bible says, when he had called the 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirit to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now, here we see that Jesus said, okay, it's not only that, you know, I know I can heal the sick, I know I can raise the dead. You know, you have seen me, Jesus said to the disciples, but I want to tell you, don't be impressed with that. I want to see you healing the sick. I want to see you casting out demons. I want to see you doing the same thing that I've done and you can do it. And then he said, it's not going to be by your strength. I'm going to give you power. You see now, this disciple that he called them. And of course, later you read uh, uh, Luke chapter 10. Later, he called another 70 because those 12 were not enough. There is a lot of crowd coming and only 12 people healing the sick. They're not enough. So he needed more worker. Say, I want to be one of them. All right. If you do, you got it. And God wants to use you two to heal the sick and also that you may uh, even start from yourself praying uh, properly and know how to pray for your health and also how to minister for the sick, okay? So uh, he called another 70. Of course, you know, if you read it here and in John chapter 10, keep on reading and you'll find that the disciple went out and they go out and, and healed the sick and cast out demons. Uh, uh, let me let me read more scripture. If you read verse five, then the twelve Jesus sent out and command them, saying, "Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, because Jesus has not yet died. He came first to his own, that means to the Israelites, and his own did not receive him. Uh, what does it mean? They didn't receive. They didn't receive him as a God. They didn't receive him as the Son of God." And they say, then you make yourself equal with God. And, and they stoned him, I mean, I mean beat him, and, and then crucified him, and he died. He came to his own. But the Bible says in John 1.12, to those who accepted in him and, and believed in his name, he gave them power to become children of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he said, go rather into the ship of the house of Israel. And as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. And then he said, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Uh -huh. So he, he, he told them, okay, it's not going to be, you're not going to charge them. You're not going to charge them $10, $15, $100, $2,000. $1, no, 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 no. You're not going to do that. I gave you this power and you didn't pay when I gave you this power. You go and tell the people that the kingdom of God is at hand and administer what is given freely. And the power of God start to flow from through these disciples. And they begin to heal the sick. And then later, that's why I want to include you into this group. Let's go to the book of uh, uh, Luke chapter 10. The book of Luke chapter 10, I believe that God is going to use you in the healings. 
and to healing the sick and your health and life will be better and better and better. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 10. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. And after these things, okay, the Lord appointed 70 others. Now, there were 12, now 70 others. And sent them two by two before his face into, ver into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. And then he said, Carry neither money bag, nap, uh, 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 knapsack, nor sandals, and great no one Greet no one along the road, but whatever the house you enter, first say peace to this house, and if the son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you and re remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things that have been given to, uh, to you for the laborers is worthy of his ways. Do not go from house to house, whatever city you enter, and then receive you, eat such things as are sent before you, and heal the sick. Uh, oh, yes. And there, stay, uh, uh, say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But uh, uh, here again, he said, heal the sick. So he commissioned the 70, and he told them, the harvest is plenty, and I know that you 70, I'm going to commission you, I'm going to give you the same power that I have given to the disciples. But I'm telling you that you're not enough. And when you go, heal the sick. And, th and then he taught them how to heal the sick. Of course, you know, everything is not written to us orderly. We have never seen uh, uh, when Jesus had a seminar on, on how to minister healing to the sick. So, uh, this 70, okay, this 70 went out, preached the gospel, and, and, and told the people that the kingdom of God is near, and they came back to Jesus. Do you know what they say to Jesus? Oh, verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Praise the name of the Lord. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall uh, uh, like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to tremble on serpents and scorpions and of all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Not, nevertheless, do not rejoice in that, in this, that the spirit are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You see, now Jesus told them, and you know what? There's, there, there's much, there is something that you should rejoice more than seeing demons uh, coming out, seeing uh, cancer, you know, leaving people or uh, uh, HIV get healed or high blood pressure coming normal or diabetic uh, person get healed. You know, there's, there's much more than, there's much more than. And then he, he told them that. Your name is written in heaven. Rejoice with that. Are you happy that your name is written in the book of, in the lamp book of, uh, in the book of the, the Lamb, in the book in heaven, written? And then when you go there in heaven, God will call you by name. You go, you enter into heaven. That's what the Bible says to us. That's very important. You know, how does your name written? I told you in the beginning because you believe that the work of Jesus is enough to save you. That's all. And, uh, and now, there's 70. He, get, he told them, I, uh, I saw Satan fall like lightning. That's the, he's an, a fallen angel. And then Jesus said that, I have given you uh, authority or uh, power to exercise the, uh, a right to exercise the power of God. That's what it means, authority. I've given you the right to exercise my power. And then, that uh, 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 you shall tremble upon 
snakes and scorpions, those are demons. Snakes are demons, you know. A snake is always represented as a demonic world, the satanic world. So he said it's going to be under your feet. Every demon of sickness will be under your feet in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every addiction, you know, those addictions you're struggling uh, uh, right now is going to be broken in the name of Jesus. And I declare healing upon your body in the name of Jesus. Those cancer, uh, the, the breast cancer, uh, the tumor, and the arthritis, the high blood pressure are commanded to be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Hallelujah. So here Jesus is saying to them, now understand that I've given you authority, I've given you power. And he said that, don't rejoice with this. And then he says, when you exercise your power, nothing by enemies will hurt you. I'm not going to tell you everything today in this short video because I want you to get something here. Now, when you exercise your authority, he said, nothing by enemies will hurt hurt you. Say it loud. When I exercise my power, say when I exercise the authority of the name of Jesus, say, say it louder. Nothing by enemies will hurt me. Say nothing by enemies will hurt me. Say it louder. Nothing by enemies will hurt me. You see, when you say it, you are releasing the power of God. That's I'm teaching you healing right now. You see, it's not like, oh, I'm, I may be hurted. If you say like that, you're not releasing the power of God. So in order to heal the sick, and if you want to live in health, speak the word first of all. Speak it, meditate. It. Nothing by enemies will hurt me when I use my, my authority. So I, I said, what does hurt me? I remember that when I when God gave me a revelation on this word, I want to tell you this testimony. I was teaching in a, in a church, not in our church, but in other churches. I was teaching prayer for a couple of weeks in one church. And I was teaching the different aspects of prayer. But one day, it was on Thursday night that I used to teach that, you know, uh, 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 in that church, uh, but the day on that Thursday morning, I start to have a pain in my stomach, a severe scrutching pain, uh, and I, and uh, like I felt like to call and cancel the meeting, but something in me was telling me to hold on, to pray more, and to seek the Lord. And that day, I was to teach about the believer authority, what we have in Christ Jesus. And I see that the devil was fighting this truth from reaching out to people and this truth from also uh, being manifested fully in my life. So I hold on and hold on and it becomes afternoon and I was reading this verse and, and the moment I see hurt, nothing by enemies will hurt you. And I, I check what does hurt mean? When I check the dictionary, the English word hurt means pain in the body or pain in the feeling. When I see that, I tell you, that I was just jumping in the room. I say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. When I use my authority, I will not have pain in my body and pain in my feeling. Wow, that's awesome revelation. That's what Jesus said. When you use your authority, the authority of the name of Jesus. When you command the pain to depart, the pain to stop, when you command the sickness to leave your body, nothing by enemies will hurt you. No sickness, no demon, no cancer, no, you see, that's how you say, you start to declare the word of the Lord. Let the devil fight with the word. You see, Jesus never fought with the devil. He told him the word. Let him fight with the word. He can't beat the word of God. The word of God is living and powerful and works miracle. God created the heaven and the earth by his word. And he said in Isaiah, the word that I sent 
will do what I have commissioned it to do. So if you stand on the word of the Lord, and not on the situation, you start to declare in the word. And I was declaring this word, and that night I went to that uh, church. And I had a little pen, but not really completely uh, disappear. But as I stand to teach the word, and as I begin to declare the word of God, I tell you, the pen left me, and I have never been sick, sick ever seen on my stomach, and that sick will never come back. And those demons could not withstand the word. That's why Jesus said, whenever you say to this mountain, be casted and go into the sea, if you don't doubt in your heart and believe that what you say will come to pass, you shall have what you, what you say. Mark, Mark 11, 22, 23. If you go and read there, it tells you the secret. So that's one of the ways you see healing works. So not only then, of course, he told the disciples, uh, not only uh, this 70, but he he told the disciples to make other disciples to do the same thing. Paul said that do whatever you see that I do and the God of peace will be with you. You see me healing the sick? You do the same and the God of peace will be with you. And uh, uh, so, uh, so learn, learn the authority that you have. Learn and experience the power of the word. Okay, the power of the word. And I want to add one thing and then I finish, you know, and I will tell you, I will pick with this one and I know how to experience the healing part of God, how to minister healing to the sick. It's uh, uh, it, the subject. If you go to Mark chapter 3, let's go to Mark. I know somebody is getting a, a new anointing coming on you as I teach this word. Listen, this step, share it to others. I believe that it will bless many people as even they listen the word, the healing power of God will come upon their body. The Holy Spirit will, 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 will touch them and heal them completely from, from the sickness. Mark chapter 3 uh, is the scripture that I would like to read. And we see Jesus healing in Mark chapter 3. I want to show you one principle about healing, especially when you are praying for the sick. I want to show you from the principle of Jesus how to heal the sick. We, we need to learn how to heal the sick. And uh, yeah, I, I love to do I've been doing this and uh, teaching my church people and, uh, and how to live in health, how to minister healing to your body and to healing to the to your family and, and, and the people around you. Mark chapter 3. And he, uh, and he entered the synagogue again. And the man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, the misshriveled hand, uh, and step forward. And then he said to them, now let me just stop here. You see how Jesus bold, how bold he was? The man was, uh, uh, had a, uh, uh, a handicapped person and he told him, hey, come in, step forward, let everybody see it. Before nothing happens, Jesus knew that something would happen. Now faith is, faith is, uh, faith speaks of course. But faith does not speak after seeing a result. That's not faith at all. You see now, we, we are in a problem, we are in a mess, things are closed, doors are closed, and you say, the door will be opened in the name of Jesus. When you say that, and you speak about that the crossing over and going to the other side, that is faith. And when everything is like the prayer answered, when everybody sees it, and you see, you see, now God is done. That's, that doesn't require faith at all. But when you see that the problem, when you see the mountain, and you see it solved, healed, this man completely healed, in your spirit man, before you see it in the physical world, you have to see it into the spirit world, that this man being whole. So Jesus saw that, he called him step forward. He came forward. And then what did Jesus do? 
Now, faith without action is dead. So he says, step forward. And, uh, and then he said to him, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch your hand and stretched it out. His hand was restored as well as the others. And the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the, with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. You see, when you heal the sick, others are wants to destroy him. That's the religious people, okay? Now, they, they were concerned about, you know, Jesus was saying, why don't you be fair? Mark 14, if you go and read there, you know, the, these people, when, they, uh, when their donkey or one of their animal uh, 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 fall into a ditch, they go out and, and pull them out. Now, they're not really fair, but Jesus was healing on the Sabbath. Well, that's the Jewish uh, 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 covenant that God made with them to keep the Sabbath, the Saturday for them. Now, for those of you who are interested to know about the Sabbath, should we keep uh, Saturday or should we keep Sunday? Or what is the Sabbath after all? If you want to read that, read Romans chapter 14 and read also um, uh, Hebrew chapter 4. If you read in those scriptures, you find that uh, in the New Testament, what really Sabbath is the rest. If you are in Christ, you rested in Him. But I don't mean that if somebody worship God on Sunday or somebody say, well, well, Saturday is a better day to worship or somebody in Arab countries, they say Friday is the better day because that's their day off and they worship that day. That's fine. That's fine. But the point is, if you are not rest, if you have not entered into His rest, which is, means not a day, rest is not a day, the rest is Christ. So Sabbath, our Sabbath, our sabbatical year, our sabbatical day, our sabbatical month, that's what we have all, you know, as God rested from all his workers, that's what to try to show spiritually to us. When we rest in Christ, we cease from all our workers. Not to be, you know, we don't do any works to be saved and Christ has done and we receive him and accepted him. We allow him to live through us. That's what really the Sabbath is. So if you are working on Saturday and if you are feel condemned and if you are feeling or others tell you, oh, you are, you are breaking the laws. And I'm telling you that the Sabbath that New Testament is talking about rest in Christ. Get that point anyway. But now we see here, I don't mean that don't go to the church. Go to the church. Make the fellowship with the people. Give your tithing and offerings. You know, that's that's a blessing for you. Uh, because if God blessed you, you give the blessing. You share the blessing. The reason why God blessed you is to do the gospel work. Understand that this gospel may be preached. And as you are blessed even in this message, I want you to go and, and, uh, and click uh, Victorious Gas Church, uh, 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 victoriousgc.org, uh, and then go into the donation button and donate your uh, best offering. And I believe this word uh, will bring much blessing over your life. So here we see Jesus stretch your hand. You see, he did it by faith. So after you prayed, you do something by faith. If you have not moved your leg, or if you, when you pray a person who has problem with his legs, you pray for him and then tell him to move his legs, uh, to, to walk a little bit, because you believe that God heard a miracle happen. And when he does that, miracles start to happen, you see? That's how you minister for the sick. I was praying for a, well, one time in Nairobi city, I was ministering to uh, the sick. And one of the lady who came to the front, she has a sore throat. And for days, she couldn't swallow uh, 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 even water. She has so, so painful. And I was just holding and touching her throat and praying and saying to her, you know, Jesus is a healer and he still heals. And he has given us power, authority, just speaking the word and I was praying for her. And that moment as I was praying for her, that sore throat was completely healed and the sore is gone. 
but she still thinks that she's still we're saying, I told her, you can't swallow even now. And the moment she said, oh, 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 it's gone. I can't swallow. I don't have any pain. She started to scream. I told her to check it right there. You see, sometimes you need to do it there. That shows your faith. Oh, I hope that you got something today about how to minister healing uh, to your uh, body. And we're going to pick from this and continue on ministering healing uh, to your body and how to live in health uh, and that's what God wants you to experience praise the name of the Lord hallelujah for those of you uh, pray for me I'll, I'll be traveling uh, in the next few uh, next week to California and in Seattle and a little bit uh, I'll go to uh, uh, Oregon just for a short time and we'll be back in again to Virginia I want you to continue to uh, lift uh, me uh, in your prayer uh, and uh, uh, continue uh, also praying for a family reunion uh, uh, and uh, God to make all uh, ways uh, and, and we may glorify Him together. And I want you to continue also support our ministry and uh, your giving makes a difference in our ministry and in your life too brings greater increase in your life. I want to bless your day and I, uh, I want you to have a great and great wonderful day. Father, I thank you for this moment. Thank you for my brothers and sisters, Lord, those who are hearing this message. And these are, Lord, people who are sick or of bondage or pain in their body. I rebuke that pain in the name of Jesus. I pray that the healing power of God to rest upon them. I command every demonic force to take his hands off from their body in Jesus' name. Lord, give them the faith and let them walk in the miraculous, in the healings, in the working of miracle, in the gifts of healing. I pray for gifts to be released upon them right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, the harvest is plenty, you said, and the laborers a few. Raise up my sister, Lord, to bring of many harvest into your king. Raise up my brother in the name of Jesus to bring the harvest into the house of God by healing the sick, by casting out demons, by raising the dead. Perform a miracle through them in Jesus' name. Continue, Lord, to bring people in our ministry and give them access to us, Lord, to uh, uh, preach the word and to heal the sick and Lord minister your power to your people. We give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you and have a great, 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 wonderful week.